What is addiction? Addiction is a relationship that people form with an activity or an involvement that produces an experience that they become wedded to in a way that they do not desist, but which is evidently destructive to them. Nothing about that definition, by the way, can be limited to drugs or alcohol. Is addiction a choice? Per my definition, uh, that question doesn't even really make sense. Uh, let me tell you why. Think about a time that you or somebody that you know has been in a destructive relationship with another person. So a lot of times that starts out as two perfectly good and interesting people who decide to become involved in the relationship. And then over time you see the partnership turns really ugly and it's obvious to you and uh, or to the people in the relationship that in the grand scheme of things being together is largely damaging and hurtful and uh, makes life broadly worse but they don't end it they stay together for various reasons I mean, presumably because what they do seek or what they get out of their relationship isn't met with a more attractive alternative for that experience in other areas of life We've all kind of seen or experienced this kind of thing. The process in which people reach this state of a relationship is what I call addiction. It's the same process. My colleague Stanton Peel was a little ahead of me on this, uh, 43 years ahead of me to be exact. In 1975, he wrote a book called Love and Addiction with a man named Archie Brodsky, in which he talked about love addiction in the same way that I just described. It's the same thing as drug addiction. The very same process. So you go back to the question, is addiction a choice? Well, let's apply that to love addiction. Is it a choice to enter a destructive relationship and stay involved in it despite its negative consequences? There is choosing when it comes to entering the relationship. There is a series of choices to be made day by day when in the relationship. Things like about how you act toward the other person, how involved you want to be, and all that. And it leads to a much more difficult choice, where you might look back and think, how did I get into this space? Now I'm in a crappy relationship, and I like a lot of things about relationships, but I don't like this one. But if I leave it, what else is there? So you're asking, is this process a choice? It's the wrong question. You don't court your partner hoping to take her home, and that things will fall apart soon. So perhaps a better question is, is addiction something that can be controlled or managed or escaped? Now that's a nuanced question about agency rather than the more simplistic question here that is it a choice, which is generally a leading question to one of morality, which I don't think is useful to get into. Is addiction a disease? No. Uh, addiction is not a disease, although I do understand that that's an attractive point of view. Americans used to suffer from a terrible, let's call it an allergy, to people with addictions. Uh, they were called junkies, thought to have defects of character. Today, that image has changed in a dramatic and overall positive way, thanks to a widespread cultural enthusiasm for what we call the disease theory. So people with addictions are no longer villains, instead they're sick with chronic progressive medical illness and deserve our sympathy. So although it's not empowering necessarily to think of oneself as diseased, it outshines the uh, moral failure premise. All things considered, it's not really a surprise that the disease model is going to stimulate such robust emotional support. But that emotional support doesn't make it correct. There's no place for addiction to exist or live um, in an epidemiological sense. It's not a biological process like the flu is. It's not an infectious disease like strep throat. There's no parasite, a bacteria, or virus in an addiction experience. Um, it's not biologically degenerative like coronary disease or ALS or something like that. So the whole notion that addiction is a medical sickness is just unfounded objectively. Uh, I will say it's noteworthy that Neuroscientists have made progress in charting the neural mechanisms and changes correlated with addiction. So when they take brain scans with people with addiction, they find changes involved in pleasure and reward and impulse inhibition. 
I've spoken a little bit about my own addiction in the past, and I'm sure that if I could have observed the chemistry of my brain while I was addicted, uh, that I would notice that as I set my focus on getting high on drugs, and the less I focused on everything else, these areas of my brain would change accordingly, no doubt. So it's really fascinating technical work, but it's largely irrelevant to the conversation at hand. Uh, these same brain changes are involved in things like reading a new book, or forming a relationship, or in developing a new passion. Anytime that there are changes in behavior and thought patterns, the brain is also going to change, and synapses will grow in some areas and become less active in other areas. So addiction has some disease-like qualities, but no, it's not. Uh, it's a it's a big mistake to call it a disease. What is the best argument against your definition of addiction? I think some people will reasonably say it's best to just say addiction doesn't exist. The basic argument there is that addiction, since it doesn't make sense in the way it's expressed around drugs, um, and the addiction theory is kind of bunk, it's just useless in general. And I actually tend to agree with most of what these folks have to say on the topic. So they have the same problems with the term that I do. We're just dealing with the problem in a different way philosophically. They'll say something like, you know, when we talk about addiction, we're not talking about anything magical, and it's just something that's going on in a person's life space, and what we are talking about, like with drug addiction, for example, can be dealt with like any other habit or process that we have to deal with, and there are a variety of ways to deal with bad habits that are pretty well understood. Uh, people you might know who talk about addiction this way are Stephen Slate or Mark Sheeran, both of who um, are very well versed and I agree with on just about everything. These are actually my sentiments exactly. I just have a different idea about what to do with the term addiction itself. For me, the term exists in the lexicon already and is being used in a way that's ultimately unstable and objectively inconsistent. So instead, I'm saying we can use this term addiction to accurately, articulately describe a universal process. You know, I mentioned uh, my friend, Dr. Stanton Peel, and when he wrote the book Love and Addiction, people incorrectly credited him with inventing something called a process addiction. So that's presumably because falling in love or being in love is a process. But that's not quite what he's saying. He's not saying that love is a process to which people become addicted. There's not, let's just say, there's not drug addiction and then there's process addiction. He's saying addiction is the process. So I think the term addiction is worth using to describe the system as a signpost and, and one that's not limited to drugs or alcohol, but any area of life that looks to be following this system. But that's, I guess, the best argument against my theory is that we shouldn't use the term at all. What is your advice to people whose loved ones are addicted? That addiction and the driving forces behind it can turn life's landscape into a difficult one to navigate. Um, people with addictions chase immediate rewards while they move even further away from what could be more uh, sustainable and fulfilling lifestyles. People don't choose this for themselves out of the gate. However, the single greatest intersection I think you can make with an addicted person is to tell them, allow them to believe that they can change. That single intervention, having the humanity to treat them as if they have some control over their own lives. I think that is what provides a vehicle in which to handle anxiety and depression and improves performance in life. But it turns out most progress that people make is the result of changing life narratives by seeing that there's a greater potential and with the encouragement to move in that trajectory, you can reverse a life story of failure into a reality that you can and you will experience. And none of that means that addiction is blameworthy, and I, I think it's not. What it does mean is that addiction does not have to be forever. 
Uh, and so the best advice I could give is don't give up on yourself and don't give up on the ones you love.